I am Tracy Peterson. I have the honor and the pleasure of showing you some new workflow features for Adobe Premiere Pro CS5. Now, to go along with the miraculously fast Mercury Engine, they've created some really nice workflow features. The first one that I'll show you being HDV scene detection. The first thing you want to do is go ahead and set up a new bin and pop open your capture dialog and start getting ready like you normally would for any other tape setup. So you name your tape. We'll name ours HDV Capture Demo. Name your clips. Start your clips off with a decent name, and they'll go ahead and increment by number as they're captured. There's scene Detect 1. And make sure your tape's all nicely rewound. So while we're waiting for the tape to rewind, I'm going to go ahead and do the simple critical step that is, click on the dialog that's scene detect. And you'll see down there there's an icon that says it's active. It's the little uh, clapboard with a check mark on it. Now, if those two, if the, that looks depressed and the check mark is in scene detect, it will be ready to go. We're going to go ahead and start our tape. I'm going to start the tape and then I'm going to press record. Now, when I press record, it's going to give me playing on video hardware on my machine. I don't have uh, live playback enabled, but you can see that it's handily capturing and it's breaking up the clips into separate scenes. Now, the cool thing about this is that just like DV, uh, you can just pop a tape in, press play, record, and boom, you're done. You walk away for however long the tape lasts and then you come back and you have a bunch of ingested media. That makes it much more convenient than actually setting in and outs for every single clip that you want to see. Now you can still do that if maybe there's one thing on the tape that you want, but if you have a whole tape of stuff that you need, especially for like B-roll and stuff like that, it's really handy to have the scenes detected right off the tape so you don't have to sit and baby it the whole time. When you talk about efficiency as it relates to editing, usually what you mean is reducing the steps that you need to take or mouse clicks or motions you have to take to produce a certain effect or task. In CS5, Adobe has given us a couple of good tools to reduce the user interface dependence and get us moving on our edits a little bit more smoothly where we don't have to click through a number of windows in order to complete something. Now, the first of these that I'll show you um, is the trim to current time indicator feature or extend edit as it's been called by Adobe. Now, the first thing you'll want to do is go to keyboard customization and set up your customized keystrokes to something that you can easily work with. Now, trim in point to current time indicator is near the bottom of the command list. And go ahead and set it to something obscure that doesn't conflict with your de defaults or ditch a default if you like. I've done it in a non-conflicting way. So control alt shift Z for the endpoint, control alt shift X for the out point. And you know, they're left and right, so that'll help me easily remember which one's in and which one's out on my keyboard. So say OK and save that setting. And I look down at my timeline and I see that there's a clip that I kind of want to shorten at the beginning and shorten at the end. Um, and this scene right here, I zoom in and I can work directly with the timeline and finding the new in and out points. So with the clip selected, I find the new in point. And I use my trim in point to current time indicator button to trim the in point up. I do the same at the end. And now I've trimmed my clip directly on the timeline without having to go into the trim window. Now, these gaps are left behind, and I want to go ahead and ripple delete them, but as I'm looking back at the entire timeline, I'm seeing a large number of gaps that I've created. You could scroll up and down the timeline looking for every single gap, some of which might be a single frame, and this process can be time-consuming to say the least. However, there are two commands... From the menu, we've got go to gap, and I've already set them to keyboard commands that are a little bit more intuitive. So we've got next in sequence, previous in sequence, next in track, previous in track. What these will allow us to do is move forward and backward through our project, finding the gaps in our footage. Next in track works only on the selected track. So as I use this, it's going to find every gap that I've created in the selected video track, which in this case is video one. When I use next in sequence, you'll notice that it skips 
the next gap. That's because the footage here closes the gap and, and Premiere ignores that as I use next gap in sequence, opting for the next gap across the entire sequence, which is this one where there's no footage on any track leaving a giant gap. Now, that'll be handy for closing up these gaps and allowing me to ripple delete the gaps that I've created while using the trim under concurrent time indicator feature. But one of the things that caused a lot of stress to a lot of editors was a change in the way that Adobe Media Encoder worked um, and allowed and caused us to have to click a large number of times just to achieve a single screenshot. So when you want a screenshot under your playhead from now on, you have this button right here, which is Adobe's answer to those, uh, shall we say, gentle complaints that, that editors had about the lack of exporting a, a screenshot feature. All you have to do is click this button, name your still, determine which format you'd like, of which there are several options, and press OK. And you'll have a still in that location, ready to use as a thumbnail or pause point for online video or what have you, or client proof. I, for one, am stoked about this addition to the software. Finally, uh, one of the biggest changes is the new interface for the Adobe Media Encoder. Um, I've got a couple things queued up here, but what's important about this is that we were missing uh, deinterlace footage before, but now I can actually interlace or deinterlace the entire thing by using the interpret footage dialog. Um, so instead of uh, trying to decipher which sequence setting is going to affect which footage setting and so on, we can do the whole thing here from Adobe Media Encoder. So whereas before, like right now, in this case, it's saying field order, use field order from file, and I'd like to conform it to progressive scan, which will automatically make sure that it deinterlaces my output file. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the same over here. And that's something that, that everybody who outputs any interlaced source footage into a web video will be find handy as interlacing can be a problem there. There are a number of other interface efficiencies, most of which apply to the settings interfaces, as well as a number of additional output formats. Again, this is Tracy Peterson, and I hope that you enjoyed looking at some of the new features of Adobe Premiere Pro CS5.